I want to have a look at a couple more substance painter patterns. Last time I showed you how to create a metal grate pattern and I just want to improve on that a little bit uh, in this one and get it closer to what the procedural uh, one is. All right, so I've got just the base material down here that we can work on. I'm going to add a fill and I'm going to alt click on height and I'll bring that up all the way. And that's all we need there. We're going to have a black mask and a fill. And in the gray scale here, I'm going to reset this and I'm going to type, start typing mesh. And you could use either of these. I'm going to choose mesh one, however. All right, and we'll just play with this. You could start to see the pattern that we're getting this thing that you've probably seen many times before. It's very simple to do right here real quick. Uh, let's set the scale at something that we like, like five or six. We'll do six actually, and then you could refine it. So this is what we're starting to get here. And I'll uh, change the tiling. Let's change the Instagram position. That's 0.5, okay. It's round number 0.6 for that. Tiling, let's just put that at three and we'll turn rotate 45 degrees to true and there you get that pattern once again that uh, is very common in sci-fi kind of uh, floors all right so and the one i had done last time was just rounded sort of capsule shaped almost so this one represents it a little bit uh, better and if you were to come over to the procedurals down here you would find this metallic grate essentially the same thing you could just drag that in and use it but I just wanted to to see how we could create this instead and then of course don't forget underneath here you can change the material too so if I drag a different material underneath you can still have that pattern on there all right so that's uh, one thing that I wanted to look at uh, I'm going to delete that layer and we're going to look at one more pattern. So I'm going to create a fill again and we're going to use height and let's bring that up and we use a black mask and a fill and in the grayscale I'm going to clear that and I'm going to start typing stripes and I want this right here stripes. Okay now this one is going to really depend on the lighting as they all do really with these uh, let's make sure that anti-aliasing is on here and it is okay that's fine all right so in the um, in the parameters down here uh, the first thing I'm going to do is come to the pattern and I'm going to uh, turn the shift like that so we can see it so let's have we've got 10 stripes let's play with the width then instead all right, so you can see what we're doing here. Imagine this is like a garage door or the door of some kind of factory or something like you might see in Uncharted, something like that. And this could be what we use. Now let's, let's add to this. Let's add a filter and let's try a bevel. Just by adding that, it seems to have popped up a little bit more. So maybe now you can start to see how this could be potentially like a garage door. I'm just moving the environment light around so you can see how it might be. Now, it is still flat. There's no doubt about that. But depending on the positioning that you have this and your lighting, maybe this could be like the, the wall of a cargo container shipping container or like I said the garage door or the the uh, factory door let's see if uh, well this is our bevel all right you can play with the bevel to get different effects let's just leave it there for the moment and come back to our stripes and see if our histograms position it's not really doing anything yet so uh, it will momentarily let's add something else though to this i don't know if we ever want to do this but if i create another fill and just use height i'm going to drop it down a little bit and a black mask and a fill and i will use the tile sampler the tile generator actually i wish it was a tile sampler tile generator here we'll have that 
and instead of brick i'm going to have an image input a custom image custom pattern you could try any of these i'm going to type in bolt you could use a circle try it with a circle or there is a circle with a cross i'm going to drag that in here and i'm going to change the scale of this and i don't know if you think that's an interesting pattern at all so now we have that and maybe i could move those so that they're in the spaces it's a little bit hard to tell sometimes depending on your lighting so let's try just moving the offset here a little bit 0 0.05 seems to have done it and so i don't know <laughs> if you'd ever have that many bolts on the side of something but you could do that if you wanted to now depending on where the light is it looks like those have jumped uh up to out of the the crevice they're they're in the crevices and i moved the light and now they're on top so it depends i do have something that will solve that however um this is actually a subdivided plane all right all i did in blenders i made a one by one plane right click subdivide five or six all right and uh that is going to be necessary in order to do this next Thing that i wanted to show you all right so we're going to come over here to the shader settings and scroll down to the bottom for displacement and tessellation and i'm going to click enable and i have my tessellation up you would you, there's a good chance that you you may need to have that up and my height i've got set at 0 0.05 I, I think that's a reasonable height this gives actual uh deformation that would be visible so now you can really see what's going on here and then we can do a few things now that we've got this going on we can come back to our original let's let's have a look at the bevel okay so you can really adjust this it's almost like a wedge and like this and maybe we would want to try let's see what happens if we add not a generator that's not what i wanted let's add a blur filter to soften this just like that now let's come back the histogram position okay just come in a little bit okay oh it's not doing anything yeah darn it Try the softness. Now the histogram position is doing something. When the softness is up, so here's an effect, a pattern. As I move the histogram position up, it seems to grow and widen. Contrast isn't doing much. All right, so. I'm just going to bring that down. So once again, uh, I envision this as a cargo, uh, the sides of a cargo container, shipping container, garage, or factory door uh, with these stripes. And whether or not these things are something you would want or not is up to you. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. Those are two more patterns in Substance Painter. The, I, I should say one last thing, however. One other thing to note is if you want to use this displacement, all right, that we put on over here, in order for you to see this in, in Blender, otherwise it will just look like this, which is totally usable as a texture depending on where you're going to be with your camera. Uh, and what you're going for but if you want to use this displacement and tessellation you will have to um, be in cycles and have make sure this is subdivided and you will need to enable bump and displacement and the displacement node connected i tend to work a lot in ev and so this wouldn't necessarily be useful to me in cycles but if you don't mind working in cycles as i know a lot of people don't and, and prefer even uh, then you can get this effect 
easily with very few polys on here to get a really cool effect. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.